Muy buenas chicos, ¿cómo están? Sean bienvenidos. Vamos a ver el programa especial de la versión 5.2 y a ver qué tiene que traer, ¿vale? Espero y la vea. Si ya usted ya la vio, pues como siempre, eh, haga su comentario en la parte de abajo. Y si no, pues bueno, vamos a darle el día de hoy. Venga, espero que nos divierta un poquito. Así que nada. Los códigos están en el canal desde la mañana, así que por eso no hay problema. Venga, vamos a ver qué nos van a presentar ahora en la 5.0. In ancient times, we were responsible for patrolling and defending all of Natland. Oh, el tamaño de la isla, bro. So Oj Khan's still managing to sow discord, even after all these years. If you want to resolve a conflict through dialogue, sometimes you need a third-party facilitator. At this time and place, I'll bet the easiest person to find is... His spirit has gotten lost and can't find its way back to his body. I just want to rescue someone, and Granny won't let me. Five hundred years later, and it's resurfaced again. I worry that we risk repeating the mistakes of the Cinder City. As long as the soul is involved, I should be able to help. tan rápido el código what the hell o sea, no duró nada bro. bueno pues nada este es el código vamos a hacerlo más cortito hey travelers welcome to the Genshin Impact version 5.2 special program I'm Gabe from the Loke team and I'm Kai we meet again whoa a cuckoo soar want to join us Hey, don't be shy. Come out and say hello. I'm not sure what that meant, but it was adorable. She approves of your compliment. Hey, I didn't know you could speak Saurian. <laughs> oh, I can't. But I can make an educated guess based on her body language. <laughs> Whoa, are all Kukusors as friendly as this one? Adult Kukusors are usually very proud creatures. But there are always exceptions. Well, since our Kukusor friend kicked things off for us, I know just the place to start. The Flower Feather Clan. All right, let's do it. Kukusors live among the Flower Feather Clan, which is suspended high above the mountains. This is a tribe of warriors, and most of their people can command the power of the skies. It was the Flower Feather Clan's ancient duty to patrol and safeguard the entire region of Natlan. As elite special forces, their job was to detect threats, disseminate intel, and quickly neutralize any dangers to the nation. Though the circumstances are different now, the tribe never forgot its origins. They still hold trials to assemble the fastest teams in the tribe. The trials test a pilot's skill and teamwork with the Kukusors. Oh, I'm so pumped about these Kukusors. <laughs> yeah, Kukusors are the proudest out of all the Saurians. They know that they're the kings of the sky. Kukusors can consume phlogiston to climb higher or perform a horizontal roll in midair. Holding the sprint button allows them to enter an accelerated glide state after a horizontal roll. In addition, they can even use phlogiston wind tunnels to quickly cover great distances. Okay, so I'm assuming that Kukusors are really hard to tame. Yeah, that's true. You need to prove yourself in some worthwhile feat, like demonstrating exceptional archery skill during flight. That's the only way to become a true Kukusor rider. Wow, that's so strict. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tell me about it. But okay, now that we've got a glimpse of the Flower Feather Clan, it's time for a quiz. What? Already? <laughs> yep, I hope you're prepared. Every tribe in that land has a unique way of communicating with their Saurian companions. The members of the Flower Feather Clan use a special item to summon their Kukusors. What is that item? 
Um, uh, uh, a basket filled with their favorite foods? Here's a hint. We just saw the answer in the previous video. Oh, I, I, I remember now. Uh, horn. Ding, ding, ding. Cuckoosaurs live far from the tribe and from each other. So in order to summon them, the tribe's no, people use whistles and horns Bienvenido to produce loud noises. So there's your overview of cuckoosaurs. Maybe they sound a little unapproachable compared to other saurians, but don't worry, travelers. If you get into a tough situation, then Chaska, the Flower Feather Clan's expert peacemaker, can help mediate the conflict. Knitch mentioned that her method of mediation is silencing both parties. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's only in special cases. Most of the time, <laughs> Chaska barely needs to intervene. Everyone knows what she's capable of, so people usually find a way to set aside their differences when she shows up. Oh, so she doesn't just handle conflicts between humans and Saurians. She keeps the peace between people, too. Exactly. Chaska was corrupted by abyssal power as a child, so she has a strong compulsion to fight, but she knows how to rein it in. Right. I heard that she was abandoned as a baby. Mm. It seems like she's been through a lot. Yeah, but luckily Cristo for her, Valgamer. the Cuckoosaurs took her Dice. in and raised her as one of a their own. In addition to hunting and flying, Dice. Chaska gained a lot of unique combat Dice. experience Dice. from her Saurian childhood. When Chaska is in your party, defeating monsters will restore phlogiston to your party. While she's in the Night Soul's blessing state, Chaska can ride and control her gun like a sniper doesn't just increase her movement speed and resistance to the gun. It also allows her to no, no get a better angle on no her enemies. enemies. Wow, Normalmente that dura siete minutos, algo así. is so o cool. Si, it cinco. seems so liberating. Dura como yeah. And Chaska's fierce video. when she's in the zone. In the Night Soul's blessing state, Chaska's normal attacks deal animo damage to enemies in front of her. Unleashing a charged attack in the state will cause Chaska to enter a special aiming mode. This allows her to lock on to a set number of enemies within range and fire up to six Shadow Hunt shells, which deal animo damage upon impact. In addition, for every Pyro, Hydro, Cryo, or Electro character in your party, one of Chaska's Shadow Hunt shells will undergo an elemental conversion to deal the corresponding Esa tiene type of elemental damage. Whoa, Esa Chaska no tiene constelación so porque Chaska son cuatro balas y normalmente son tres. La cuarta bala se la da el, se la da la primera o la segunda constelación. She can swirl them at the same time. That's awesome. Yeah, I know, right? Her elemental burst has a similar function too. Chaska fires a gale splitting soul seeker shell during her burst, which deals Por cierto, Chris, agregate al pinche WhatsApp, cabrón, no te puedo hablar. Soul seeker shell, no sé which no continue agregado. to attack nearby enemies. These shells can also undergo elemental conversions. Ya te mandé al Discord. Las dos wood. No wonder she's one of the strongest of the warriors Oro. in her tribe. Speaking of her tribe, Cristo the warriors Valdamer. from the Flower Feather Clan Dice, are formidable for sure, no es no but we should also shed some light on those who aren't as skilled. Oh, How many four normal and three elemental are? Seven. Seven. This will be a trial. This will be a trial. The flight trials, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The revolver only has six balas, which will be four, five, and six. The Flower Feather Clan has its own definition of strength. The Flower Feather Clan has its own definition of strength. There's a tacit understanding that the wingless are supposed to be protected until they can fly by themselves. But that assumption is challenged in Tribal Chronicles Tlalocan. Someone will dare to ask, what if you didn't need a cuckoo to fly? If you could change the rules, then maybe there wouldn't be any wingless to begin with. Now, Cristo whether Valdamer. that's the right path Dice. is for us si to tres, discover. Si me Chaska poner will also el be there tres. to help us find the answer. So. Be sure to check out Chaska's Tribal Chronicle if you're interested in what happens. Is there anything else that you can tell us? Hmm. Ah, remember how I mentioned that Chaska was raised by Kukusaurs? Yeah, tell us about it. <laughs> Her Saurian mother will make an appearance in this quest. Even though she's joined human society, Chaska still goes to visit her Saurian mother on occasion, especially when she needs some help with a tough situation. Oh, so Chaska still has the soft side, even though she's a fearsome warrior. <laughs> the Flower is also the setting for the <laughs> Chaska, chapter 5 interlude. All fires fuel the flame. 
The tribe is facing a crisis, and they'll need the traveler's help to find a solution. What kind of crisis? Well, the Flower Feather clan suffered Cristo the worst of the abyssal contamination Dice, during the battle in version 5.1. It's not just a human body that can't withstand high concentrations of abyssal power. For most people, it also damages the mind. Many members of the Flower Feather clan are suffering from the mental repercussions of the abyss, and the tribe is in desperate need of aid. Iansan will be there too. After rebuilding her own tribe, the Collective of Plenty, she's traveling around Natland to help those in need. The people of Natland really value unity, don't they? No one fights alone. Right. That's one of my favorite things about Natland. Oh, wait. It looks like the captain will also be there. Yes, the captain will also Lucas. offer help to the tribe. Bienvenido al you may pick up on some interesting information if you pay close attention to what he has to say. The captain rarely gives away too much information in his regular interactions, but his secrecy here Dice, seems a little peculiar, so buenísimo. keep an eye out. But, of course, restoring that land's fighting spirit remains the Visualmente top priority. Si. After all, the war is in play. The no sabemos, contamination vale. is still around, and we have a very important battle ahead. Natland needs mental fortitude more than ever before. The Flower Feather Clan is pretty close to the masters of the Nightwind, where the Ictomasaurs live. That tribe could be another good place to recover from the battle. Oh yeah, let's check it out. If you head west from the Stadium of the Sacred Flame and go past the Towering Walls, you eventually arrive at the settlement of the mysterious masters of the Nightwind. The tribal settlement offers a unique glowing landscape at night. If you Dice, venture even further, then you might encounter the tribe's one Ectomosaur elder or one of the many shamans who Claudio can communicate Aedo. with spirits. Bienvenido al I even heard that the witch doctors who Claudio live there Aedo. can help cleanse your Dice. spirit. Oh. Plus, Hola, the graffiti art is really incredible. In fact, there's something special about this one. Can you figure it out, travelers? Hmm, it's kind of tricky, right? Well, don't worry, the Ectomosaurs can help us out. Ectomosaurs are known for their wisdom. They can use their unique sight to detect things that can't be seen through normal mains. Whoa, okay. Right. Ectomosaurs are especially skilled at detecting ley lines and phlogiston. They can absorb power from phlogiston objects to enhance their abilities. Doing so allows them to jump higher, move faster, or even obtain surprising rewards. Ectomosaurs can also extract information from graffiti art to create special objects. Oh, I bet that'll come in handy for solving puzzles. Definitely, especially in Tribal Chronicles Mictland, which is a the, the, the first two Esa acts feature a lot of intriguing puzzles. So be sure to check them out, travelers. Hey. Some of them will require the help of an Ectomisaur, es que and others can be solved on your own. I noticed that Ectomisaurs can perform fast jumps when they have, have enough flotation, and it looks like so much fun. Do we know anyone who can use that ability? Besides the new Saurian, I mean. Yes, Aurora can do it too. Like the Ectomisaurs, Auroron has the ability to rise into the air. He also has a keen sense of perception. While charging an aimed shot, Auroron will enter the spirit speaker state, allowing him to extract power from Natland's graffiti and runes. Speaking of Auroron, I was honestly I super surprised it's by his personality. Before the 5.1 Archon quest, I thought that he looked like a stern, stoic, and harsh type of character. But as it turns out, he's just a sweet kid. Yeah, it's kind of unexpected, right? Is he really that sweet though? Just to think about all the sweeping around que me behind his este man's back. Ah, uh, <laughs> true. Ya the tribes people of the Masters PTM. of the Nightwind are known for being eccentric. But Auroron really takes it to the next level. Yeah, it sounds like he does things his own way. I wonder if that extends to his combat abilities. It does. Auroron is a bit different from the Natland characters we've met so far. He doesn't need to depend on the Night Soul's Blessing state to gain Night Soul points, and he can maintain the Night Soul's Blessing state even while he's off-field. Ah, that does sound different from the other Natland characters. So, how do his abilities work? Por Let me start by explaining how Auroron gains Auroron Night Soul no points. This can happen in multiple ways. 
For example, Aurorun can gain Night Soul points when one of his party members triggers a Night Soul burst. He can also gain them when other party members deal Hydro or Electro attacks to enemies after Aurorun unleashes his Elemental skill. Oh, then it sounds like he works well with Hydro and Electro characters. <laughs> yep. And in combat, when enemies take damage from Electro charged reactions or other party members deal Night Soul aligned damage, Auroran can consume Nightsoul points to enter the Nightsoul's blessing state and trigger the Hypersense effect, dealing Electro damage. Oh, I see. Es, es, so you need to que cae him with the right de characters if you es, want es, him es. to gain Nightsoul points, enter the Nightsoul's blessing state, and trigger the effect. Exactly. Ooh, well, funciona I con Lisa, bro. Lo quiero, bro. Need to be on the field Tendré to trigger the Hypersense effect. Wait, de PT he can trigger it even Eugene. while he's off field? That sounds really useful. Totally. His elemental burst provides a convenient way to deal damage and support your party. Auroran performs an ancient reach roll with his burst to summon a supersonic oculus, which taunts nearby enemies to draw them in. Me imaginé que podría close, funcionar con Lisa, bro. Me parece que funciona con Lisa. Ahí vi que lo pusieron ahorita con Lisa. should be great for crowd control. Yes. With Auroran in your party, dealing with large groups of enemies should be a lot easier. And speaking of making things easier, Aurora can also improve the exploration experience by boosting the gliding speed of your characters. No creo. Awesome. Aurora really cherishes his friends, but the little teamwork on his side, I'm sure victory will always be within reach. Dice. Muchas veces han puesto a Lisa ex. Cool. So we introduced two of the upcoming regions in this update: the Flower Feather Clan and the Masters of the Nightwind. But there's more. Version 5.2 actually introduces another new region. It's called Ochkanatlan. Oh, I think we caught a glimpse of this ancient city when we were looking at the Flower Feather Clan. It's really beautiful from far away, but those clouds look kind of ominous. It looks completely abandoned. Is it dangerous? Yes. This is a restricted area in that land due to its severe abyssal contamination, and it seems uninhabited. Over the years, many adventurers have come here in search of treasure or to slay the dragon. Unfortunately, none of them have ever returned. The Flower Feather Clan often sends riders Cristo to patrol Valdemir. the area and to prevent Dice. people from getting too Igual close. Que Wait, lo dar did you más say slay si no the dragon? Yeah, I know we Boris introduced Oriflame some Pe. adorable Saurians earlier, but this creature Vir. is actually Boris really Oriflame terrifying. Pe. Oh. It occupies this ancient Oron city and guards asterisco. it fiercely. If it detects an intruder, then it will attack without hesitation. Okay, that's pretty concerning. It's easy to take human Saurian coexistence for granted these days, but it actually took generations of effort to reach this point. This relationship wasn't nearly so harmonious in the ancient past. Travelers will need to explore Ochkanat land to uncover the reason behind this dragon's rampage. Of course, travelers won't have to do this alone. Here, take a look. Oh, what's that? This is a very important companion who will help us explore Ochkanatlan. His name is Kokoeek. As for his power, well, why well, don't you take a guess? Okay, um, is he our moral support? You know, maybe he could make a cute noise every now and then to cheer us up. Hey, let's not put our Capetlasaur friend out of a job. Little one works really hard. Okay. Then I've got nothing. Remember how I mentioned that Oshkanatlan is heavily corroded by the abyss? Well, that's where Kokuik comes in. Cristo we can Valdemir. use his power to clear Dice. abyssal contamination. Y Follow the direction y indicated by his light to collect okay. secret no sé, source oh. scraps and enhance his power. Once ah, mira, está el nuevo has enough power, es you can take him to track down the evil dragon. What a useful little guy. I know, right? Now travelers can explore Oshkanatlan with two companions. Kokuik and Little One. In fact, I've heard there's even a special token around here that can enable Little One to traverse a volcano. Hmm. A new adventure with Ooh, Little One cuidado, awaits in la segunda parte, Chris. This de las dos piezas. will bring us one step closer to vale. uncovering the mysteries of Little One's past. Familiar Saurian companions can also help us explore Ochkanatlan. For example, Cristo with Valdemir. the help of a Koholosaur, we can evade source Ahí mechanism salió. attacks. With the help of an Ikitomi Saur, we can solve certain puzzles. With the help of a Kukusaur, we might even be able to chase down the evil dragon. But we'll leave the rest for you to discover, travelers. Wait, are, are those some kind of lava fish? Does this mean we can fish in Netland? 
Yes, but ah, sí. I've got some friendly advice. Me lo de la pesca. You should be very careful while exploring Ochkanatlan. Some of the abyssal monsters here can distort their appearance to mimic powerful enemies. High-level monsters such as the tenebrous Papilla can mimic even stronger enemies. Uh huh? It looks like these monsters take the form of plants outside of combat. Yep, that's true. The abyss has corroded Natlan's ley lines, allowing these monsters to read the memories inside of them and mimic creatures from Tevat. How do we defeat them? Travelers will need to use elemental attacks to break the enemy's protective void wards. Doing so allows them to yeah, como madre que no, si and hay. causes them to enter a brief del state arma. of confusion. Night Soul no no attacks sí, are especially effective against these wards. No sé si es una espada, wow. creo. The Abyss has gotten so advanced. It's scary to think about how much harder these fights will get if these Abyssal Cristo monsters Valdemir. continue to evolve. Dice. Yeah. Dice okay, okay, that was a lot of information to take in at once. But before we take our first break, okay, entonces, we still have para qué te pondrían pesca si no hay, vale? No. First up, limited time exploration rewards will be available in version 5.2, just like in version 5.1. Si travelers can earn up to 400 extra primo gems. Bienvenido and the rewards will be available all the way Leonico through version 5.3. It's Dice. now time to introduce Hola, the event wishes. Hola, In the Black. first half of version 5.2, we look forward to the event wishes from Chaska and Lenny. Odd will one. also receive a drop rate boost. And in the second half of version 5.2, Así me puedo saltar esas versiones for Zhongli and New Villet. The weapon banner will feature a new 5-star bow. Vale, ese es el de Chaska. Crimson plumage and two new Netland specific 4-star weapons. El catalizador debe ser el del probablemente el de All right. It's time for our first break. Leonico Once Polibis. we come back, we'll dive right Dice. into the event portion. Ya estoy esperando ese video si recomiendas a Chaska. Es que yo la recomiendo si la quieres sacar, pero yo no la sacaría. Nunca pensé que vería un seguro Oriran de Neubilleti Lini antes que el primer Oriran de Riotesley. Vale, el evento. Welcome back, travelers. Ese es el evento principal. Welcome back. ¿no? Let's dive straight into the event section. A ver, sí, sí, so porque trae la corona. Event, we'll get to learn more about the masters of the night wind. That's right. In the version 5.2 event, Iktomi Spirit Seeking Scrolls, travelers will team up with Sitlali and Auroran to get to the bottom of a mysterious accident that occurred within their tribe. Travelers will need to complete combat challenges to defeat enemies who try to disrupt the ritual. They'll also need to reconstruct scenes from the tribe's woven scrolls and gather lost spirits scattered throughout the region. Travelers will only be able to uncover the truth if they collect all the clues. But don't worry, there are also various rewards to earn along the way. Esa espada probablemente sea para ella, ¿vale? No, no es para los de ahorita. Sabes, no tengo a Neubillete. Es que si me juego 15 deseos, el 50 diagonal 50 con el me alcancen los 45 restantes más los de la 5 para Maguica. No. Definitely. Sit Lali and Aurora have some really suerte. fun dialogue in this event. <laughs> I'm always grabbing the popcorn whenever these two interact. They're practically a two-person show. And speaking of fun, let's get into the event gameplay. First up is the Search for Lost Spirits minigame. Travelers will have to work together to <laughs> turn <laughs> the scattered roaming spirits into specific yeah, zones antes. to earn points. Un, Pay attention un evento to anterior, the conditions right? on the field if you want a higher score. Okay, For example, grande. travelers can jump on stone slabs that appear on the field. These slabs will break open and release even more spirits. Storms may also appear yeah, during the game. Evento, no hay you nada can nada track nuevo, vale. down spirits no more effectively if you pay Lamente attention to the direction of the storms. In, Atlan, in, in Evil Banisher, travelers will need to select the right the teams to complete the pelea. objectives. Completing all of the objectives will award you the Banishing Aura, which allows you to deal AoE damage by spraying paint at enemies. That paint really matches the Masters of the Night Wind's aesthetic. It's super cool. Yeah, and so does the spirit loom in restoring fragmented records. Sitlali will use her powers to reveal special fragments. Travelers will need to piece these fragments together and assemble them on a woven scroll. Hmm. Make sure that you pay attention to the order and positions of the fragments. Oh, there's something else that we should mention. Travelers can obtain a new four-star sword by completing this para event. Sitlali, no es para the nadie design más. definitely fits Estoy the Masters que la de of it looks like some kind of. Lo raro es que la hayan puesto artifact. antes de ponerse la Citlali. Debió haber salido en el evento de Citlali, no ahorita. 
For example, this quest will review new clues about a mysterious and legendary place. Ojo, ojo, habla de Marilliva, ojo wow, por ahí. We've been hearing about this place since Mondstadt. It'll be nice to get some new information. Mm -hmm. On a related note, the Adventures Guild has prepared a new trial for its members. Active adventurers have been invited to take on the challenge, including the traveler. Travelers will need to complete various challenges with designated characters and fully leverage their skills to earn rewards. I know you're up to the challenge, travelers. Good luck. In Mondstadt related news, the Knights of Favonius are conducting a war game to improve security tactics in the region. And who better to test these tactics than the honorary knight? Be sure to pay close attention to the game since the format has changed this time. Travelers will need to select combat units and stratagems to deploy against the opposing formation. Este juego, la misma Once the lineup siempre, is set, the monsters repetido. will fight automatically. Available combat units and stratagems are completely random. You know, just to build some unpredictability into the wargame. The chances of encountering elite combat units increases as the wargame progresses. Even more elite monsters will be available for travelers to use. It's a volatile environment. So do your best to win as many rounds as possible, earn war game medals, and collect the rewards. All right, let's keep the excitement rolling in this next event. We actually have a demo, so please take a look. Oh, Esto está looks bueno, like they're selecting tactics. Enemigos, Double damage? Final... That sounds powerful. Whoa, it's automated. Cool, the elemental reaction effects are completely different. This brand new heated battle mode is called Automatic Artistry. Powerful support cards have been added for nearly every elemental reaction. Choose cards that align with your strategy to trigger personajes. powerful the elemental fuck? reactions. The effects will change depending on how you play. In addition, the overall gameplay is very laid back. Characters will automatically duel each other and skill animations are now shorter in length. Wow, it's like we got a whole new Genius Invocation TCG after coming back from Natland. Talk about that. están testeando, estos cabrones están testeando para poner un TGC de cuatro cartas. Ya lo veo venir. I really recommend checking out this new gameplay mode in version 5.2. Ya lo veo venir. Al rato van a ser de cinco, ya no cuatro. Also bring a few updates to regular Genius Invocation TCG. Por fin van a sacar a a Rosaria, loco. Well, don't worry about that. Our next event will give travelers the opportunity to enjoy the great outdoors. In Claw Convoy, travelers will need to help lock up some adopted animals. Travelers will be able to see the animal's point of view by using a special tool. Once you've managed to deduce their location, you'll be able to track them down. Once the animals are safe and sound, travelers will receive a gift from the mysterious figure who adopted them. I feel like Auroran would really shine in this event. He's definitely an animal lover. <laughs> I can see that. I'm sure that he would jump at the chance to meet animals from other nations. Yeah. Finally, the Leyline Overflow event will return in version 5.2. If you need Mora or character EXP materials, then keep an eye out. O sea que el evento right. esta semana no es de Mora, es de, 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 es de mejoras de personajes. First up is a change to the Imaginarium Theater. Previously, travelers would be returning to the theater pasando, lobby no me after cuenta. completing a challenge and have to reopen the Fantasia Tome to continue. Travelers provided feedback that this setup interrupted their experience. So, this will no longer be the case in version 5.2. Now, after finishing a battle, all you need to do is click Next Act if you want to keep fighting. Nice. Travelers can now enjoy the thrill of combat without any interruptions. And for all the generous travelers who like to configure supports for their friends, a supporting caster record has been added in the new update. You can now check which friends have borrowed your supports by looking at the supporting cast screen. Cool. It'll be nice to know that our supports are helping people out. Yup. Oh, and the party configuration mechanic has also been optimized. Besides the elemental filtering, the Imaginarium Theater will now feature recommended row icons, elemental statistics, and markers for the main types of enemies. That is so helpful. I'll occasionally put together a random team if I've just started experimenting with some characters, but this information should make it a lot easier to form strategic teams. These markers will display key information on how to counter enemies, but in a much more prominent position. Hopefully, this change will make it easier for travelers to form the best teams. Yes. Now we can directly see which elements work best against specific enemies. That's definitely going to save some time. For sure. 
and we can expect even more optimizations in the future as travelers continue to provide valuable feedback about their experiences. Okay, let's introduce the other system optimizations coming in version 5.2. You can outsort five star o sea, prácticamente todo el directo fue de no presentar historia, sino presentar mejoras. O sea, si ya lo pusieron en texto, ¿para qué chinga? O sea, ay Dios mío, es lo que yo no entiendo a veces. Si nos los iban a mostrar así, ¿para qué nos hicieron un, un, un texto? No lo hubieran puesto el video directamente y decir, ¿saben qué? Esto es lo que va a haber. The seed dispensary can now hold more of every type of seed. You'll be able to purchase wood at the Realm Depot in exchange for Realm currency. In addition, the cooldown for the boon of the Elder Tree will be reduced to 5 seconds. Way, it will be easier for travelers to collect wood. Awesome. I've been meaning to use some cool replicas in my Serena teapot, but I'm always short on wood. So this should be really helpful. Nice! I'm so excited for you. Oh, and optimizations have been made to artifact locking. The updated lock assistant interface will allow you to configure lock settings with a single click. Just hit Use Recommended Settings and you're set. It's already boring. After 30 and tantas versions, it's already boring. It's updated automatically based on popular in-game configurations. Of course, if you have your own ideas in mind, then you can always disable the recommended plans to configure custom ones instead. The update also allows you to batch lock artifacts in your inventory based on the recommended general lock plan and set lock plans. This will make it much faster to organize your inventory. In addition, a shortcut button that navigates to the lock assistance interface will be added to the artifact domain challenge screen and the artifact acquisition screen. This should make it easier for travelers to configure their locking rules whenever they want. A star feature will also be added next to the lock button on each que, que artifact. Travelers can use this feature to mark their favorite artifacts and filter by stars to quickly track them down. Finally, treasure compasses will now be able Esa to locate even more treasure locations, including sealies and time trial challenges. A quick swap feature will also be added for treasure compasses and Oculus Resonance Stones. Enabling this feature will allow travelers to more easily use these devices across regions. The feature will automatically switch to the compass or stone that corresponds to your location in the game. Awesome! Be sure to check out future announcements for more details on the version 5.2 optimizations. Alright, that was a lot of info, so this seems like a good time for our second break. Prácticamente fue pura me redemption mostrar code. mejoras, bueno, realmente no mostraron nada. news to share. Welcome back, travelers. What else do we have on the agenda, Gabe? We have some very exciting news to share. After the version update on November 20th, travelers will be able to play Genshin Impact on the Xbox Series X and S. Log into Genshin Impact on Xbox Series X and S consoles to receive the Wind Glider Wings of Fate's Course intertwined. Additionally, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate members can play Genshin Impact via cloud gaming. They'll also find extra rewards in their in-game mailbox. Awesome. All right, that should be everything. That means that we've reached the end of the special program. Is there anything that you want to say before we go, Kai? Yes, I'm really looking forward to all the new characters. Chaska and her weapons seem really incredible. I'd love to see how her tribal chronicle unfolds because she has such an amazing personality. And Auroran seems like a very layered character. The storytelling is definitely going to shine. What about you, Gabe? <laughs> yeah, I'm just so excited for players to experience more of the Natland storyline. And we have so much to explore this time. I mean, two new tribes and a new area as well. And one thing I've always loved about Genshin Impact is how it's multi-platform. Like I'm always logging in on different devices depending on where I am. So it's just exciting to see another platform become available for everyone. Yeah. And um, yeah, on that note, I hope you have fun with the new version, travelers. Bye. 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 <laughs> Pues nada, eh, chicos, en resumen, básicamente, eh, 
más mostraron la nueva zona. Realmente lo importante es Hodge lo que está en pantalla. No hay más, literalmente es eso. Nos mostraron la pesca, una nueva arma, eh, las dos nuevas armas que probablemente sean de banner. Eh, ¿Qué otra cosa más? Los personajes, Chasca y Ororón, de los cuales Ororón es el mejor. En cuanto a soporte y va a durar mucho más. Chasca se va a quedar en algún momento en el tintero. Probablemente como le ha pasado a muchos personajes de, de Anemo. Salvo hay gente que lo sigue usando. Espero que no sea el caso de Chasca y siga funcionando bien. Pero es que de acuerdo a su mecánica. El hecho de que saque al azar y no puede escoger los elementos que quiere para pegar. Cuidado, ¿vale? Porque entonces estamos hablando de reacciones al azar. Y reacciones al azar no siempre necesariamente es bueno. Tenemos el caso de Raiden que es muy particular, donde Raiden pues básicamente no necesita hasta cierto punto un personaje que baje eh, defensa, ya que ella lo hace por, por, por constelación entonces esa parte también ayuda en, en su daño eh, Chaska no, no lo revisé hasta el último las constelaciones pero sí que necesita la, la C2 C1, C2, para sacar una cuarta bala elemental, con lo cual ya con 3 eh, tenemos 50-50 de hacer daño, o sea que básicamente está haciendo menos daño del que debería hacer con lo cual ya está determinando que Chaska es un personaje que necesita constelaciones. Ya sabemos lo que pasa con los personajes que necesitan constelaciones, ¿vale? Terminan perdiéndose en el camino. ¿Por qué? Porque no tienen todo su daño, entre comillas, base. Recuerden que la mayoría de los personajes que son eh, constelaciones dependientes terminan perdiendo con referencia a otros que no son, como por ejemplo Nubilet, que si bien Nubilet con constelaciones es mucho mejor, ¿vale? No necesita de ellas, ¿vale? Automáticamente es un daño súper especial. Esperemos que sea el caso de Shaska y que termine haciendo daño, pero fuera de eso, no hay más. Los eventos están bien, normalillos, los de siempre, ya los conocemos. Nada más le dieron su revisada normal de versión, es normalillo. Las protogemas están bien. Eh, la historia seguramente va a estar muy bien, sobre todo la del dragón. Yo sé que va a estar bien porque va a hablar una parte importante del lore. Que platiqué el otro día con mi amigo Cristóbal y salió el comentario. Que de hecho, no sé si había el video del cabrón, pero bueno, por ahí se lo dejé. Eh, ya os pasaré el video en otro momento y, y os grabaré un. Probablemente un video de ese video. Obviamente, tengo que pedir permiso al, al, al autor para hacerlo, eh, porque obviamente es un material que él trabajó y no quiero ganar pues, dinero en base a eso. Eh, fuera de ello, no hay ningún problema. Así que eh, la versión está bien, pero realmente lo importante es el lore, ¿vale? El lore. Las nuevas regiones. Y ya acabó. No hay más. ¿Vale? Los personajes, si acaso no. Ya está. Todo lo demás es repetido, repetido. Repetido de lo que venimos haciendo otras versiones. Ya. Venga. Nos vemos en la próxima, chicos. Espero haya gustado esta información. 